Have you ever tried to use a wait in a for each function and realized that it doesn't really work the way you want it to? Well, that's because it's kind of designed that way. Um, what you may be looking for is really a for of loop function. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing the difference. I'm going to show why you should stop using the for each function uh, if you're trying to do uh, asynchronous code um, and why you should start using for of. And I'll also show uh, even if you need an index, you can still use the for of function. Normally, you don't have an index in that function, but uh, there's a bit of a hack that lets you use the uh the index still get the index don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon let's go ahead and get started this is a replit i created you can uh find the link to it in the description below i'll just go ahead and show you what's going on so i have an array full of numbers um, i have a function called an add function that just adds number one and number two together uh, returns the answer this second function here is a subtract function i just have it uh, subtract number one from number two um, and I'll go ahead and explain these different for loops uh, one at a time. This first one is the for each for loop. Um, the first parameter is the element within the array. The second one is the index. Uh, I'm wanting it to add the uh, element to the element to get the answer. Uh, and then I want it to subtract. And uh, so that it doesn't end up being zero each time, I just say E plus I plus the index so that um, it'll actually give an answer more than just zero um, after the, the zero index. So, uh, but what you'll notice is it won't work exactly the way I want it. I want it to finish all of this uh, logic, all of these functions before iterating to the next one. And let's just see if it works. All right, as you can see, it did not exactly work. What it did was, it ran this uh, add function for all the numbers within the array. And then after it had already finished that, then it moved on to the subtract function uh, for all of them. So that's just how for each is designed. Um, so basically you should only use for each if you are okay with it, uh, working this way if you're okay with it just triggering one function and then with all that's within an array and then triggering the next function with all that's within an array uh you can go ahead and do it that way but if what you're looking for is you want it to run all the functions within an array before looping to the next one then what you're probably looking for is something like a for of loop um, and I'll show you this one here. This is a for of loop. And the way it works is um, instead of the E and the I, you would just say something like const uh, whatever of the array. So you could, this could be E if you wanted it to be, but I just made it num to make it easier to understand their numbers. So let's go ahead and trigger this one to see what happens. And as you can see, it does what I wanted. It runs the add function and the subtract function before uh, moving on to the next one. You can see it here. Here's an add answer, subtract answer, add answer, subtract answer, and so on. Now, what if you want the index for uh, a for of loop? Well, it doesn't normally come in a, a for loop, but this next function here, it uh, shows how to still get the index that of the element within the array. The way you do it is you put this first value in a bracket and your first value is the index. The second value is the value within the array. And it's really important to remember the index comes first. Normally in something like a for each, the index comes second. But for this, the index comes first. Um, and when it, with the array, you need to make sure to put an entries function, uh, trigger an entries function with it. Uh, and then from that point on, you can use the num like you were before. And then you'll also have access to the index. And so let's go ahead and trigger this function, see what happens. And there you go. As you can see, it still triggered uh, one thing at a time. It went in order the way I wanted it to. 
um, and it was able to trigger all the functions uh, asynchronously in order, which is what we were looking to do. If you're a React Native or Expo developer interested in push notifications, you may be interested in this video right here. You can be up and running in under three minutes using nativenotify.com. Or if you're a Flutter developer interested in push notifications, you can watch this video right here. Don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.